Tauri is an awesome alternative to Electron because it allows you to both build fast and secure web-based desktop apps based on Rust. So let's take a look at how it works. And to now get started, we're first of all going to need to set up Rust on our machine, which works differently on different operating systems. On Mac, you'd need to do these two commands right here. And when you're done, you can say npm create Tauri app at latest in your terminal and just go through the prompts. So yeah, the name is fine. We're going to use TypeScript or JavaScript in our front end. We like npm and of course React. And we're going to use TypeScript. Don't worry if you just use JavaScript, this will work just as fine as well. But because Tauri is really type safe anyway, we can just use TypeScript to make everything a bit easier. And now if we just take a look, we can see here we've already got our Tauri app and we can now CD into it, CD Tauri app and do an npm install just like we always would. And when that's done, then you can just run npm run Tauri dev, which will basically spin up everything for you and compile some Rust. So don't be worried if it takes some time. So as you can see, we now got a little Tauri app right here where we can add a greeting and stuff, which is really cool and basically looks like an Electron app on first glance. But what's really cool is that it uses the built-in browser API from your operating system, meaning that you don't have as big files because you don't ship a whole version of Chrome with your app. And it shares resources with other apps using this API, meaning that it doesn't take up as much RAM either, which is really cool. And now let's get into actually modifying this a bit. So as you can see, we've got two directories here, a source directory and a source Tauri directory. As you can see, the source Tauri directory basically contains some Rust and the source directory is basically just your front end. And in here, we already see some cool stuff, which is an invoke function. And this invoke function can call Rust code. So as you can see, we are invoking the greet function and passing a parameter. And if you just take another look at our main.rs file in our source Tauri, we can see here is this greeting. So basically, we are calling Rust code and then we can use the return value from it. So if we were to do something like add another function called square that takes in a number. So n is an unsigned 32-bit integer and we also return an unsigned 32-bit integer. And we were to then just go ahead and say n.how2, then we could already call it as long as we go ahead and add it to this little array down here. And as you can see, every time you change something, this Tauri window will pop up. So if you don't want that to happen, then you will need to close the application. Totally fine in my opinion though. Now let's try this out by adding a bit of state to our app right here. So const num and set num starts as two because we can't uh, square a zero or one. And then we just display it down here inside of a little button, for example. It will basically do what the other function did. So basically saying, okay, we want to set our number and we want to invoke square with our number. And now we see, okay, this isn't an async function. Fine, we can make it async like this. And now everything should work just fine. So now let's try it out by running our Tauri app again. And we of course did a little mistake, which is that I called it num in here and n in my Rust code. So if we just change this up real quick and reload, then we should see that our code is now working and we can square stuff. But if we go too far, then we can see that it crashes because Rust doesn't handle errors the same way as TypeScript. So you will need to handle your errors if you want this to work properly. But on the other hand though, Rust is a lot faster than TypeScript. So for really complex operations or stuff that interacts with a system, you should probably use Rust anyway. But what's also really cool is that you don't necessarily need to use Rust for every bit of functionality that interacts with a system. These APIs right here, for example, are just provided by Tauri itself and you can already write to a text file, read from a text file, and get the home directory of the user without needing to write any Rust code, which is really cool. And this also has some really tight security so that other modules that might be nefarious can't interact with the user system if you don't allow it. So now let's just try this out by running a little bit of a use effect right here. And we want to basically persist our state inside of a file. So to do that, we'll just go ahead and say, I want to write text file. Then I need to add a path and I need to add a string that I want to write. And in this case, we're just going to json.stringify an object and that object should contain our number and our name. And now we need to get this path right here. And the issue with that is that we need the home directory. So let's do that real quick. const home equals home dear, which is an async function. So we need to await it, meaning that we need to make the use effect asynchronous as well. So we just make it an async function that calls itself. And now what we can do is we can just say the path is home plus our file name, for example, test1.json. And now we could already run this as long as we add the required parameters. So num and name. And now we can already try it out by starting up our app again. And we should actually run into an error. So let's take a look at what it is. So as you can see, the path module is not enabled. You must enable it in one of its API allow lists. And that's what's really cool. 
Tauri is secure by default because you need to allow every feature that interacts with the system separately. So if you just take a look at our Tauri conf.json in our source Tauri directory, we see this allow list. And here we can basically define what level of system access our app has. So for example, all features are disabled by default. The shell cannot be interacted with, but it can be opened. And what we now want to do is we want to say, okay, I want to have access to all parts of the path module. So I want to be able to get the home directory, the app data directory, etc. And then I want to be able to interact with the file system. To be more specific, I want to be able to write files, read files, and that in the scope of the home directory. So I can only write to home test one dot json. So no nefarious apps can interact with any files on the system except for home test one dot json. And now if we take another look into our app using inspect element, we should see that the error is now gone. And if we take a look at my home directory, you can see here is the test one dot json file. And if we just read it out, test one dot json, we can see num is two and name is an empty string. So it works just fine, which is really cool. And if we now wanted to access this data initially, then that would of course work as well. We can just copy over this use effect right here. And instead of writing a file, we can of course read a text file, just not pass this second parameter right here. And then we can just say, okay, const content equals await read text file. And we could, for example, just console.log the content for now. Then we can see that it logged the content of the text file, which is exactly what we wanted. You will of course need to be a bit careful with race conditions right here, because both of these use effects are async now, so you might want to do it in one use effect. That's of course up to you, depending on what your use case is. But anyway, that's basically how Tauri works. But it might not be enough to build a proper app. You might want something for styling as well. So I want to check out this video right here, where I show you how to use vanilla extract with React, which you could just as easily use with this as well.